yeah, I don't think we need to talk about these uh, Vox guitars. Uh, when we talked beforehand, beforehand, like offline, um, about the the yeah built-in speaker Vox guitars, I think you you mentioned like yeah Vox brought, came up came up with this questionable guitar. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's supposed to be a travel guitar, but like they've done this back in the 1960s. They had this kind of weird ass guitar that had a built-in speaker uh i think fernandez had something like yeah. that too like really yes. ugly ass guitar with a, a speaker in it i remember paul gilbert back in like i think it was the 1990s there was a photo shoot with him and one of those ugly ass guitars and yeah yeah it's it's not anything really new but they they wanted to arken back to the 1960s but with like more modern needs out of yeah, a guitar yeah. like that but uh, i don't know it's novelty it's kind of the thing that i personally i have like no interest for something like this and i i don't know who would maybe someone who just like plays for fun and likes to have a backing track and you know sit on their porch in front of a beautiful lake playing their little vox travel guitar but the demo i heard <laughs> uh the guy was playing it and it was out of tune and it sounded horrible so I'm okay. going to hold whatever opinion just to the fact that this is not something that I would be interested in. It could be cool for someone who's looking specifically specifically for that, but mm. personally, <laughs> yeah, it's um, I I guess the 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 average street musician is probably better off with an acoustic guitar, and then and not with one of those things. <laughs> yeah, and you get yourself one of those. Uh, I forget the name of the company, but they make like this little pedal, guitar pedal that has all these drum loops in there. Uh -huh. You're probably 100% better off with that than with something like this guitar. Yeah. Um, I just want to touch base on this really quick. I don't want to go too deep into this, but while we were talking about like faithful recreations and um, doing things the, the way they were done in the in the early days... Uh, it seems like like Vox is like uh, claiming the biggest um, the biggest flag this year, you know, with the hand wired yeah. series, and now they're also coming out with these um, apparently super faithful '60s Vox um, war um, recreations. And the thing is that normally I wouldn't be a lot into this but recently i've like kind of rediscovered my my interest in wah pedals for a long time i was like no um the last wah i used was during my time in that heavier band and it was i used it like for for two two or three parts within a set and it wasn't a cool effect and then at some point i just you know but recently i, I i'm really interested again and there is it's interesting to know that there is an, an entire science around wah pedals. There's there's like a group of people mm. who are so into wah pedals that they look for, um, especially with the Vox, like with the 60s wahs, there are, there are some that were made in the UK, there are some that were made in Italy, there are others that were made in the US, and there's, there are differences in, in, in the components. And I, I always knew that people who are into certain things they're like meticulous about it but it seems like with with these wah pedal guys it's a it's a different level yeah the these here um every time i've heard these like the real mccoy and uh the other one the v 846 every time i've heard them i was like i think that's the i think that's the why i need like i love wah yeah. It's not something I use all the time, but every time I, I try different wah pedals, I have an issue with the sweep. So it feels like mm. you go super thin or really dark, and it seems like you only have like a really small movement you can make with the wah to actually get the effect. And because I have big clunky feet, I actually like a wah that has a wider sweep where mm -hmm. I can know like, okay, if I tilt my foot this way, I'm getting the more throaty thing. Or if I tilt it this way, I get the more raspy high end. Yeah. The yeah. closest I've been to that is actually right there behind me. That's a um, flatly wah. 
This one here is based on like one of those 1960s Wasso. Uh, it's twin T something. I don't know anything about pedals when it comes mm -hmm. to building them, but this one here is actually really, really cool. And when you kick it in, it doesn't thin out. And that's something that pisses me off with the Crybaby or th those that I've tried, which were like the lower end one. Is mm -hmm. that you click it in and already you have this whoosh, whoosh, and you hear this god awful noise whenever you're sweeping with it mm. so what i ended up doing just like you i used to play in a heavier band and i had this one section in the song where i needed a wah and i was playing the more the morley bad horsey two and i really love that one but then again it's more subtle so it's not like a yeah. big ass throaty like wah kind of thing but these guys here that's what they do and they're really good at it but i've don't own one so this is the kind of thing i'd probably pony up the money to get one of them like the mm. the, the real mccoy uh i think that's the clyde clyde mccoy like a trumpet yeah. player guy they were yeah. trying to copy the because he was putting a plunger in front they were trying mm -hmm. to copy that with this model and it's 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 a fantastic pedal i love that one yeah yeah i guess i, I guess a lot of these recreations are just proof that if a company like Vox does that and they kind of try to recreate and bring that sound back into a more affordable format, it's just testament to uh, the weird pricing and the, the super exaggerated pricing on the used market. Because if you look at some of those yeah. wars and uh, and a good a good buddy of mine who is a total war nerd, he told me like, um, here I have I have these four, and he showed me like the Italian made one, and the, and we actually we uh, looked we took a look inside and looked at the components and everything. And he told me what he paid for some of those, and I was like, "Oh, man, that's a lot of <laughs> money for for a while." But and he's but he's a he's a fanatic. So, um, and um, yeah. So I I think Vox coming up with those is just like okay, uh, if you want if you want that, um, you can have it, and you don't have to pay four or five hundred bucks for a wah pedal. You know? Yeah, I th I think this is probably their more interesting release for Nam. Uh, yeah. the, the amps could be interesting too, but I'd have to try them out. But this here, yeah, I mean, if it can like give a big ass kick in the balls to all the price gougers that are just like increasing the price on vintage stuff, that's yeah. great. Because I mean, some people can't afford that, and they're like, "Oh, I insist on having an original." But yes, being the way I am, it's like very there's very little situations where I'm willing to put a shitload of money just to get the original. Uh, maybe yeah. like amps like that but because no one's re recreating those anymore but for a no, fucking no, no. pedal like paying like hundreds and hundreds fuck off i'm not doing that 